the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. I guess they took the temple back over. Maybe. I don't know. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why ye look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life whom God hath raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses in his name through faith, in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is in him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I wot that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had shewed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which made God, which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Chapter 4 And as they spake unto the people, the priests, and the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them. 
Oh no. Being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Here we go. Are they gonna start start getting brokered out some murder some more? And they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now even tied. This that means evening. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about five thousand. So in chapter two, they did three thousand. Here we have five thousand. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Anas the high priest and Caiaphas. Well that that guy, he's the main murderer. Oh, let's see what happens to him. And John and Alexander. And as many as were of the kindred of the high priests were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, If we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. So he's blaming Jesus. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Okay, so we hear we hear this phrase many a time. I don't know many a time. I cannot give specific instances, but it's over and over and over that he that which was discarded, that stone which was discarded shall be the cornerstone, shall be the most important stone of the whole temple, right? And that's what they did. They discarded him. They murdered him. And well, they broke him out to be murdered. Specifically. And then he is uh, repeating this out of their Old Testament back to them. Out of their Torah. Let's see what they say. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was heal healed standing with them, they could say nothing about it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. Uh, yeah, you couldn't deny all the stuff that you murdered Jesus for either, but you denied it anyway. We cannot deny it. These are the Pharisees. These are the just liars. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. He told them, you want, you want us to listen to you more than listen to God? Go ahead and judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. For when they had further threatened them, 
they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. So they were out of tactics. They had nothing left. For the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was shewed. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. They told them all about threats. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David hast said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. That's right, they all wanted to kill him. That's right. I'm glad they. I'm glad this guy threw. I'm glad they threw an Herod in here, cause it seemed like that wasn't pointed out enough. I pointed it out enough. Herod, Pontius Pilate, Gentiles. See, even though Pontius Pilate didn't want to do it, and told them pretty much that, like I'm pretty much not going to do it. And basically, we don't really find out who did it, but it must have been the Roman soldiers. Because didn't they refuse? The Jews refused. So, he could have saved him. But he did something good. He said, um, the king of the Jews, and the Jews, with their nastiness, came up to him after he wrote that on the cross in three languages and said, oh, no, 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 you have to say... I am the king of the Jews, like making it a mockery, but he refused to do that. He didn't do that, but he was still involved in the Gentiles and the people of Israel. They all tried to kill him. They're not even mentioning the Pharisees, the elders, the scribes, and the Jews. They're not even mentioning that. For to do whatsoever they, thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. Yeah, that's good. Who is this praying now? Let's see. Peter and John. It's Peter and John, I think, praying. And, lo and now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. So there's an earthquake. Right on. That's notable. So if you're gathered with a bunch of people and there's an earthquake, that's a good sign. You might be happen to be filled with the Holy Ghost suddenly, right away. <laughs> More. So that's awesome. There's an earthquake. They prayed. Um, Peter and John and probably and the guy, the guy that was healed and was able to walk. And they were all praying, and probably more people, and there was a big-ass earthquake. They're praying. They're saying they are threatening us. They're threatening us. They know they're getting ready to be caused harm. That's exactly what happened to Jesus. It's like the beginning of this. It's like they're soon they will be lying in wait. Soon they will be after them. They are soon to make... Um, well, they're doing it all. They're doing it now. They're constantly minds on evil, constantly some of them, and so they are making plans to lie in wait, to, and they know exactly what they're doing because they just went through this. So here's lawsuit number two, right? And they're like, 
Lord, Lord, they are threatening us. Hello, Father, Father, help us. And boom, there's a big earthquake. That's a really good sign. And then they get all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spake the word of God with boldness, right? And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they all had, but they had all things in common. Oh, that's nice. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. That's very nice. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph's who by the apostle was surnamed Barnabas. And now I'm really confused because remember before they were saying Jesus had a brother named Jose. <laughs> Is this the same guy? Uh, who by, I have to look that up. It's not funny. But it's funny because I remember it. I'm proud of myself. And Jose, Joseph, who by the apostles is surnamed Barnabas. That's not a good name. It's not. It's the bar. The bar part. And you know what? Like, you know, Simon Bar Sinister in the cartoons? Well, you know, in Arabia, they're all called, like, Ben. The son of, son of, son of, Ben, Ben, Ben. In another language, I think it's Bar. Bar is the word for son. But there's a place in India called... Bur, bur, uh, bur, it's not Barabbas. It might be Bard Abbas. This is Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation. So yeah, see the son, a Levite and of the country of Cyprus, having land sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. He's probably some rich guy. He was a Levite, though. But he came from Greece. He came back from Greece to... Because he heard about him, probably. He heard about um, what had happened with Jesus. So he's coming to come follow him. And he heard what he's supposed to do is go sell everything and go follow them. And it looks like he did that. But, um, get it, okay, it's over with. That's the end of chapter four. But you know what? Okay, that makes sense. Because, like, a norm... I don't know. Do, I, do you think the Jews also had names Ben, Ben, Ben? Yeah, they must. Like, yeah, they do. Because that guy on YouTube, Stephen Ben Noon. Ben Noon, son of... But I need to look more into this word bar because it's not good. And I think it might be an Enoch. It might be a fallen something. But there's a place in India. There's a huge place. It is so crazy. And it's just stone. And there's no fl flick, f flowery type design on it. It's a cave. And it's... like sanded down to like perfect lathing like they don't have lathes that we have this day that could do that and it's done the entire thing on the ceiling everywhere on the walls and the floor i forget what it's called but it seems like that's probably where one of those that and also 
who is the one standing, the one on the cross next to um, the Lord, wasn't his name, he was Bar Barabbas, he was a thief or a murderer, and they preferred not to let him go, they, they just wanted to keep Jesus there, because they hated him so much, right? Wasn't it Barabbas? But here, here's another one. So that that guy, Bar Barabbas, right? His name means son of, right? Abba, right? Or something. And then this guy, Bar Nabas, means son of Nabas, right? But there's something I gotta look up about that bar. It's not good. In that place in India, they have that cave. And it's like one of the finest um, buildings, like on Earth to this day, I think, because they can't do it now. It it would take like, and it's too perfect. And they have like they did it. They studied it with lasers, and it's like completely perfect. And this is like a really long time ago. So, but anytime you hear that word bar, and look, where do people go drink these days? What's it called? It's, like, still a word of iniquity, to be honest, right? Bar. And to be honest, like, the word Barbara is probably not such a hot name to name anybody. Right? And that's why Catholics are really kind of goofy, right? Because there is an etymology to this bar, right? I can't explain it right now, but I know it's not good. But, like, they have a St. Barbara. It's like, why? Why do you do that? I think they do it just so they can have more people following them. Like, oh my gosh, that's my name. I totally belong being Catholic because, oh my gosh, there's a St. Barb. No, Barbara. Barb. Bar. Maybe I'm not doing the whole etymology. Maybe it's even more. Barba, it might be, or Barbo. Right? And like even that movie Barbarella, right? I think that was like, it caused, anyway. But I'll keep my eyes out, but I'm gonna leave that as a question. But yeah, these Pharisees, these Jews, these others, they're gonna do, they're just lining up, lining up, lying in wait, getting ready to do the same things that they had just done to Jesus. And they're getting their little notebooks out and instead of studying their Torah or their oral, they, I guess they didn't write it down yet, maybe, at this point. But whatever they're doing, they're just like, we can't deny it. We're there. They feel stuck. They don't know what to do. Now it's just getting worse, right? This is why they killed Jesus. They didn't want this spreading. And it, it was ineffective, the murder of him. In fact, it's going the opposite way. The other day, they got 3,000. Today they got 5,000 and they healed a guy that couldn't walk. So it's getting clearly worse. And let's see how dirty they are going to be to these people. Because snuffing out this action has created increased power on their enemy's part. So. They're realizing that they're at a loss. They don't know what to do.